You know, time is a funny thing. It really is. If we reround the clock just a few years, we wouldn't even know what Halo Infinite was. But on the other hand, we've known what Halo Infinite was for just shy of three years. In some ways, it feels like we've been waiting an eternity. In others, it feels like no time at all. Lots of things have happened in the time between figuring out the next chapter of Halo and where we are today. So we're going to talk about that journey and how I believe the future will look. In 2015, we got our hands on the last main Halo game that we'd experienced for over half a decade. It was... lackluster. I know that you know that I know that, but I'm setting the stage here. If you'd told me in 2015 that I'd be waiting six years to jump into my next Halo, I'd tell you that you're crazy. That's longer than the wait between GTA 4 and GTA 5, which felt like an eternity to me. It also means the absolutely terrifying fact of Halo 5 only being four years away from being 10 years old. In 2018, I distinctly remember Halo not being on my radar at all, for the first time in maybe my entire life. Fun fact, I actually guessed the name of Halo Infinite more or less. I think I called it being called Infinite or Infinity. I can't remember which one I said. On one hot Tampa day, I rode my bike into work and began working my shift like normal. As I arrived, the E3 conference had only just begun. The worst thing was, I was going to be working during the Xbox conference. I headed into my monotonous customer support job with a heavy heart, knowing I'd likely be missing something I'd never missed in my life. It was a new job, too, so I didn't want to push it and take the day off early or take an early lunch. Eventually, I managed to peel myself from the call center to step into my happy place at our little lunch area. I eagerly wiggled my fingers in excitement, my phone barely staying within my silly hands. I managed to pull up the stream, but not before seeing a push notification from a little birdie telling me that a new Halo game was teased. He even spoiled the title, the absolute jerk. Regardless, I scrubbed the stream back to the beginning and watched as this incredible environment was revealed. I marveled at the droplets of rain racing down this chasm. Thunder raging within the distant winds. The subtle splashes as the deer quenched its thirst. I gazed at the crackling fire with soft embers being carried into the breeze. The soft glow of flame reflecting on the cave paintings. The parched sands of the desert twisting and raging with a nearby vehicle wisping by. This wrecked tent recently abandoned. The pounding march of nearby creatures. We see the tracks left behind by these mysterious creatures, and now we've caught up to one. We watch as it catches its breath in the penumbra before dawn. The sun is settled above the horizon, and with it, these dual-horned rhinos awaken, ready for their daily rituals. We watch a slowed angle of the nature, and see the pollen and dust swept into the air. The tent appears again, and with it, an abandoned cockpit. Our eyes travel south, into a lake and we peer at a construct inspecting the husk of a military vehicle. On the shoreline, it looks as if there's soldiers traveling. With the drop of a flare, the billowing smoke seems to attract attention. As that inspiring music lifts itself off the ground, it slams back down as that ever-familiar piano arrives. Chief is back, and he's looking classic again. Before long, those desperate soldiers are rescued, and they set off into the horizon. I assume to take them somewhere nice and wonderful with juice boxes and macaroni and cheese. With such a heavy focus on large, expansive environments in this trailer, I felt primarily that its intention was to sell me on scale. Just look at the segment that Chief is driving in. We've never driven on roads that open because the games weren't designed to truly be that open-ended. I walked away from this trailer thinking with certainty that we were finally getting an open-world Halo game. A dream come true. The atmosphere of this trailer is absolutely unrivaled. 
There's a reason why so many people knew this was Halo well before any obvious clues were placed. It's because this felt like Halo pretty much immediately. It did everything in its power to have the essence of what we all love so much about the franchise, and it demonstrated a scale that Halo has never seen before. In the depths of a cold, air-conditioned hole, now a tenured agent and a leader at my job, I had more pull and managed to get the sacred day of E3 2019 off as I lurched with my withered fingers over my keyboard, my back fully arched so as to observe the screen with my non-prescription glasses, the moment arrived. Within the cold storage of a frozen pelican, drifting in the vacuum of space, a lone pilot without his wings lies trapped in the empty husk that once allowed him to fly. Awakened from a deep slumber, Something's gone wrong. There's a breach in the vacuum. 33. Pressure building in lines 4. Protocol accepted. Breach detected. As he desperately attempts to restabilize his vessel, he succeeds, but not without a tumble. A small puck rolls and places itself at the forefront of the frame. It tells a story of a man separated from his family, or without them completely. Either way, he's without them, and that has to be painful. <laughs> and can you sing? Good singing. How about, I miss you. Miss you. And I love you. I love you. As he watches his wife and child, nothing but a memory in this form, he softly repeats the words of his daughter. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. He's watched this many times before. The pilot is lost, not just physically, but mentally. He's trapped in an inescapable prison where with limited resources, only death can come for him. With the thoughts of hopelessness, the mind almost disallows hearing the faintest beep, a pulsating green light. His thoughts continue to run. I like to think he begins to imagine himself home between the two most important people in his life. But his ears fail to deceive him. Tag designation friendly. Someone is out there, someone friendly. As he hurries to the intercom, in my head, he imagines all the possibilities of who it could be. His wildest imagination couldn't possibly pick the Master Chief. Shifting to the Chief suspended in the cabin of the Pelican. The pilot composes himself. For the first time in a long time, he feels it. It's crept into his thoughts, and in the very back of his mind, tucked deeply into his subconscious, is a single thought. I'm going to try to overwrite. Please, just get me home. You can hear me in there. I hope you're ready. Please don't die. Please. Pilot has discovered hope. I remember how satisfying it felt to see Chief jump to life, and that old familiar shield recharge sound was top notch. The way that the music swelled with Curtis Schweitzer's excellent score struck a deep emotional chord. It filled me with hope. We lost, lost everything. There's nothing left for us here. I don't think where here is. 
Suddenly, as the pelican was shocked, that old, familiar drumming kicked in. We all know the sounds. No, we need a fight. Before we know it, Chief is once again nosediving straight into conflict. It's all he knows. Every piece of this trailer is crafted with emotional depth and weight, from the cinematography, to the lighting, to the performances, and of course, the score. But after this trailer, silence. Until... Having spent four long months in isolation, I found myself looking more and more like the Halo 3 rat by the minute. The trauma of the world around meant that seeing the thing I love so much would mean all that much more. As I reached over with my decrepit rat claws and pierced my mouse, arriving at the Xbox Twitch page, the moment once again began. As I watched Chief's armor assemble, I remembered all those past feelings of stoicism and bravery that we've seen before. That famous moment just after destroying the AA cannon in Voy, facing the Didact head-on, staring down a guardian, leaping into an army of brutes. Chief was never shy of a fight, and this armor would certainly see that through. The coolest thing is, I still have video of myself reacting to the gameplay. So rather than talk about it, I think I'll just show you. Demo, demo, demo. <gasps> what? What? Am I dead already? I'm All right, I'm muting. Yeah, yeah. This is a punishment, right? It's a playable demo that we're going to be able to play like right away. I'm checking oh! right now. Oh! I'm checking my email. Ha oh! ha. He's a grappling hook in the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shh. What is that? Is that a phantom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a banished phantom. It's open world, boys. Oh, it is. Look at that. <laughs> it's open world, boys! This is amazing. Oh my god! The elites look good. Yeah, what's that pistol? What is that command? Oh, oh my god. god. What? Oh, that looks like a Titanfall gun, the way it reloads. Okay, yeah, that's right. Oh well, we know. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't take out Sprint if they had already yeah, added it. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Spiker. A Ravager. Ravager. What? Oh my god, look! Look! It's a. Oh it's my god! Oh, they're on a ring! Oh my god! I'm gonna cry. I'm literally gonna fucking cry! What? Dude, they're crying. They're flinging, the brutes are flinging guns, dude, what? <laughs> I love the with the jackal sound. They've got a mall. The mangler? That's the thing the brute was holding. Okay, uh, that, that okay. kind of hook works for me. Yeah, I changed my mind. It's like the Doom Eternal one. Oh, you can grab stuff! <laughs> what?! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, dude! Oh, this is amazing. I need this game to come out now. Yo, it's a, it's a semi shotgun! I'm literally gonna cry, dude. Brutes and elites against you at the same time. 
Yeah, no, that's never happened, right? No. No. Look at the gun diversity. There's so many different weapons. Bro, this is a demo we can install right now. I guarantee you it's a demo I we can install. Right I don't now. have an email yet. Wait till it's, it's over. Yeah. 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 Needless to say, I was very excited. Of course, history will tell you that ultimately the demo was somewhat poorly received. I only felt this of the visuals. Everything else, the music, the art, the gameplay, it was perfect. And then, as with before, there was silence. Post-reveal, there was growing concern. Not just about the visuals. We knew that the Xbox Series X was launching in November, and the fact that we were hearing next to nothing for weeks filled many with dread. Suddenly, on August 11th, something began circling around social media. An image on the official Halo account. And, well, I'll just let 2020 Jarosunder explain. So I was kicking back in my chair, playing a good old game of Fall Guys on stream, mind you, when I saw something on Twitter. It shook me at first, and I felt myself freeze to my very core. Halo Infinite is delayed. It's official. Halo's official Twitter account actually tweeted out what feels like mere moments ago, that they were not satisfied with the state of the game, and as a result, they were going to be delaying it until 2021, without specifying exactly when in 2021 it would launch. Today, I want to share an important Halo Infinite development update with the community. We have made the difficult decision to shift our release to 2021 to ensure that the team has adequate time to deliver a Halo game experience that meets our vision. The decision to shift our release is the result of multiple- As if to sink our hearts to the ground, we learned that Halo Infinite was delayed. The good news was that Joseph Staten would be joining the project, the legend himself returning to the wheel. But there was still the unshakable fact we wouldn't be getting our hands on it until 2021. Four months of silence later, we got our first look at Infinite since E3. It looked fantastic. The lighting looked significantly better. But as we scrolled and reached the end, we received loving words from Joseph Staten himself. He delicately danced a paragraph of just how special that Halo Infinite was. And then he dropped the bomb. Halo Infinite will be launching in fall of 2021 a full year's delay. Believe it or not, this actually brought relief for me. I was glad to see the game getting all the development time that it needed. Over the months, we got little cherry-picked pieces of the game, small morsels to keep us occupied, until we could once again set sight on that which we wanted more than anything. And just like that, it was June. I... what? Did you want me to keep going? It's... I mean, unless you're looking at this in the future, maybe take a, maybe take a peek at the current date, Chief. Sorry to say, we're caught up. Sometimes you see patterns in life. The same people driving to work. The same squirrels running up a tree. The pattern that I began to recognize with Halo was a consistent need to push for a certain date, removal of features or complete lack of optimization. With an extra year in the oven, I'm sure that Halo Infinite will be all the better for it. I expect that come the 13th, we'll be treated to something that truly is a crowd pleaser. There hasn't been a single piece of Halo Infinite that I've seen that wasn't made for me. And I really think that a lot of people can say the same. If we're going off of what we know, we've got a great shot at an absolutely fantastic Halo title. I figured that we'll be getting a big look at the multiplayer experience with maybe just a taste of campaign, and maybe even a sampler of some Forge. At the end of the day, I have no true clue, but some echoes in the halls of eternity seem to whisper of multiplayer being the topic of discussion. But with that said, now we simply wait. With a week and some change left, soon we'll be right back there at the top of that peak, ready to see the view. This time, we won't tumble down. We'll stay there, and the weather will clear, and we'll have all the time in the world to enjoy the view. 
Hey guys, if you made it this far, once again, just know that I so appreciate you. I think we know that good days are ahead, and I'm just going to politely suggest that if you liked the content, please subscribe. I've got plenty more content planned in the coming days and weeks, and I very much look forward to seeing how this community comes to evolve and grow in the coming months. And I hope you guys join me along the way. Thanks again, and it's time to thank my Patreon supporters. Nuck and Futz at the $2 tier, Tease at the $10 tier, Ryan McCann at the $15 tier, Turner at the $5 tier, and Screamy at the $10 tier. One last thanks for the road, and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.